I'm Mel from the Wix Design Studio. In this tutorial, I'll show you how a design expert uses the Wix editor to create a multi-layered parallax website with multiple scroll and hover effects. This technique is great for any website, but especially a designer's CV or portfolio. I'll start by creating a color-changing gradient background with a static typographic layer. So let's dive in. First, I'll open the Wix editor and start with a blank page. I always start by saving and naming my site, so it will auto-save in the future. Before starting, I created a gradient background in Sketch and divided the image into blocks that are 1920 by 1080 pixels. That way, I can add as many color blocks to my site as needed. Back in the editor, I'll go to the Pages menu, select the circle icon, and click Settings. Under Layouts, I'll choose No Header and Footer, so it's totally blank. To add the first strip, I'll go to Add, Strip, and drag it into place. To make the position exact, I'll set the Y to 0 and the height to 1080 to match the color blocks we already created. To change the background, I'll go to Change Strip Background and click Image. On the bottom left, I'll add a new folder and label it My Website. I'll just upload all my color block images here and select the first one I want to work with. Perfect. The size of each box will be 1920 by 1080 pixels. To make the white frame, I'll click Stretch and select Screen, and then I can adjust the margins to create a white border. I'll set mine to 30 pixels. To duplicate this strip, I'll click on it and press Ctrl D, then position Y to 1080 pixels. I'll treat this strip exactly the same as the one before, only this time adding the second color block. I'll do this process three more times with Y positioned to 1080, 2160, 3240, and lastly, 4320 pixels. In preview mode, you can see how the color gradient changes as I scroll. Now, let's add a static typographic layer. I pre-made the text I wanted and exported it as a PNG with a transparent background. It has the same dimension as my gradient strip, 1920 by 1080 pixels. Adding the typographic image to the My Website folder, I'll select it to change the background. As a default, the image uploads with a white background. I can change this by going to the image settings and change the color behind image to zero. Then I'll add the scroll effect Reveal. By duplicating the typographic strip, I can adjust the Y position to match the color gradient strips. To recap, the Y position is 1080, 2160, 3240, and lastly, 4320 pixels. In preview mode, you can see the text looks static, while the color gradient changes in the background with the reveal scroll effect. So now I'm done creating a multi-layered parallax website with a static typographic layer. It looks amazing like this. Then I'll finish the white border, add content with hover effects, and an autoplay video. To complete the white frame, I'll go to add and drag and drop a white box. Then adjust the height to 30 pixels and the width to 2500 on a center align. I'll pin to screen and set the position to top center. Then adjust the vertical offset to zero pixels. I'll do this again to create the bottom border, only this time I'll pin it to the bottom center. In preview mode, you see how the two parallax layers now have a fixed white frame. When working with multiple layers, I can select the bottom layer by clicking on the strip and selecting overlapping items. Here I can see all the layers and select the one I want to move. Now, I'll add hover effects to content on my site. First, I created two images, one with the hover effect and one without. Back in the editor, I'll go to add, choose interactive and select a hover box. Now I'll remove the pre-made content on both the regular and hover mode and adjust the width to 646 and the height to 455 to match the image I'm going to add to it. On regular, I'll change the background color to white and go to settings to reduce the opacity to zero. I'll upload the two images I already made and select the regular image. I'll do the same thing to the hover mode. Change the background color to white, reduce the opacity to zero, and use the regular image. To add animation to a hover box, 
I'll need to attach an image and animate it. First, I'll add the hover image and adjust the width to 646 and the height to 455. Now, when I attach it to hover mode, I can also add animation effects. Under animation, I'll choose fade in for a smooth transition. In preview mode, you see the hover effect in action. I can also create overlapping content with hover effects. I'll go ahead and duplicate a few more hover boxes and change their content. Next, I also want to create an interactive shadow effect that's not attached to an image. First, I'll create a transparent PNG with a drop shadow frame. With another hover box, I'll delete the content from both the regular and hover mode and reduce the opacity on both to zero. Now, when I add a transparent PNG image and attach it to the hover mode, I get this really cool drop shadow effect. I'll go ahead and add a few more hover boxes. To make the site come alive even more, I'll add an autoplay video box. I'll add a box slideshow and remove all the slides except one. I'll delete the pre-made content and set the dimensions to match the video, which in this case is 604 by 318. Under layout, I can hide the navigation arrows and the side buttons, then change the image to the video. In preview mode, you can see the autoplay video plays on loop, which creates a really unique look for this site. To add to the parallax look, I'll add an image that scrolls behind the playground text. If I drag the image, it will attach to the playground text strip, which I don't want. So I'll attach the image to the strip above and reposition it using the toolbar on the X and Y axis. In preview mode, you can see the image scrolls under the text. To add the auto-changing title at the top of my site, I'll first add my text. Then, I'll customize the font and adjust the colors. With an interactive slideshow, I can attach the text on top. Just like the autoplay video box, I'll remove all the pre-made content, delete slide 2 and 3, and hide the navigation arrows and the side buttons. Then, I'll change the background color to white with zero opacity. I'll attach my text on top of slide one and duplicate this slide three times so that I have four identical slides. On each slide, I'll edit the middle text. To make the text look like it's auto-changing, I'll apply the transition effect, crossfade, and adjust the seconds to one. So in preview mode, it looks like the text is auto-changing. I'll finish up adding all the remaining elements, so hang tight, because there's one more thing I want to show you, how to animate text. All right, I'll animate the text featured work by clicking on it, animate and choosing reveal. Then I'll customize the direction from top and duration to two seconds. You can see the text reveal from the top down. I'll go ahead and add animation to a few different elements so you can see how they look. And that's it. Here's my final multi-layered parallax website with a static typographic layer featuring a color changing gradient background and multiple scroll and hover effects. Thanks for watching. I hope you had fun and we'll see you in the next one.